What's going on, all gamers? Here we are back with some more. I've got that in the wrong angle. Just a bit. That's better. Right. Here we are back with some more Outriders. And today I'm going to be going over a full build guide for the new Akari face tank. An absolute beast. If you are struggling to survive those encounters, if you are just finding it not so enjoyable because you keep dying or you just keep really, really struggling to get through those encounters, sometimes you make them, sometimes you don't you're struggling on CT-15s, this is the one for you. Gone are those days, nah, stand in amongst everything, hit them with heatwaves, and they'll fall over. So, if that sounds interesting, that's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox and of course a lot more fun gameplay and content on the way and of course a lot more Outriders, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. And for today, if you could, I'd like to ask you two big favours as well. One, if this helps you and if you enjoy the build, then why not hit that thumbs up button as that will really help the channel. Secondly, I was not going to bring this build out yet as the build I wanted to actually use a certain mod in it. I have not been able to find that for love nor money. If you have come across the Lava Light helmet, please chuck it in the comments where you have found it, as I want to know if it's only specific places or if it kind of drops higher at specific places, because I am really struggling. But now that that's out of the way, let me chuck on a little bit of content showing you the gameplay of this actual build and how crazy survivable it is. Face tanky, don't worry about dying. You're going to absolutely destroy everything in your path and stand in front of it as you do it. Right, so hopefully from that footage you could see that this is an absolute beast of a tanking setup. It is definitely one of the most fun builds I've created and you can really get in their face. You would have to be very, very unlucky to die with this or just kind of doing it a little bit out of playstyle. But I'll go over everything in the build and I'll make sure that you guys stay alive and clear all those CT14s and 15s and quite easily. One thing to note, you have got one mod slot in this that you could very well change out. So I'll go over that in a minute, but if you wanted to, you could change it out for either more damage or more mitigation or just something of your own preference playstyle wise. So what does the build involve? Right, so first off the bat, I will tell you what you can swap this out for, but as always, because it's an anomaly build, if you do have the death shield, this will be best in slot. There is nothing that hits as hard as this. It's the only gun in the game that gives you this kind of a multiplier. It is absolutely ridiculous. I say multiplier, I mean damage buff. Basically, you're using this for Fortress. Receives up to 43% damage bonus based on your armor. 
absolutely ridiculous. At endgame, you're going to be getting that 43% extra damage, and it just means that everything hits like a truck. There's nothing like this mod in the game. For anomaly builds, chuck this on. Second up, I've got Shadow Comet. Shots cool down a comet, dealing 210,000 and free damage to enemies within a 3.5 meter radius with a 3 second cooldown. No need to tell you why that's good. Chuck it on if you need to take a shot on someone, especially if you've applied heat waves to them, it will absolutely melt an area like butter. Now next up, and this is just one that I've put on just to show you a kind of a kind of alternative. So if you didn't have Death Shield, you could very well use something like this, the juggler with scrap grenade and moaning winds, meaning that you're gonna do a lot of area damage. The scrap grenade does an anomaly projectile doing 226,000 in a five meter radius. Reload often, or every second, should I say? Reload, shoot, reload, shoot, reload, shoot. You'll be getting a big chunk of air effect. Also, moaning winds. You're not gonna notice it. It's gonna be in the background when you're reloading. Really nice, really easy. If you didn't have this, or you didn't have moaning winds, or you didn't like this, because scrap grenade is still a bit buggy sometimes, you could use anything that's got an air effect. Even something such as this. The imploder. Deadly disturbance. Critical shots activate an unstable anomaly effect in your enemy, causing him to explode, dealing 222,927 damage to other enemies in a 5 meter radius. Now, don't worry about the fact that it's got Fortress underneath, just chuck on the Crit mod. It's the one that gives you the extra 15%, meaning that basically when you're taking your shots, you're going to get that crit off, you're going to get that damage, it will do a nice chunk of air effect. Nice and easy, really quick, and it will just be really nice to go. Lastly, and if you have got it, put on any handgun with a low clip size, so like this one with six, empty it at the start of the mission, and have Moaning Winds on. What you're gonna do is exactly what I do here, just in case you don't know this little trick. So what you're gonna do is take all your shots. See that explosion? That was the moaning winds. Now obviously you've got an eight second cooldown, but because we've swapped off of it so fast to our main, now nah, whenever we've got eight seconds is up, I'm just gonna bop into a big group of ads or a boss or anyone that I've kind of already debuffed with my heat waves to get extra damage, and I'm gonna just swap over for a second and swap straight back. Big air effect, big ad clear, big damage. Really nice, really easy, clears content faster. Now, like I said, for my run, I didn't really go all out, to be perfectly honest. I just wanted to see if it was viable, run the round, having a little laugh, and having a little face tank. Really is, really easy, and we could have cleared much, much faster if we were putting things in the rotation, like the comments and like the moaning winds. But over here, we're gonna be using the free piece of Kari. No need to tell you why this is good, Everyone's using it, and for good reason. It's the highest anomaly power in the game currently. It boosts your anomaly through the roof. It is absolutely ridiculous, and just really, really good on the Pyromancer. So what we've gone for is the head slot, the chest, and just down here, the leg armor. Now, this one comes with anomaly power, skills life leech, and status power. One thing you definitely want on it is the tier three mod, Fire Tsunami. Heat wave increases the width of the firewall. Now, the reason you want that is because you capture more things. This build is all about health regen, it's all about staying alive from your tick damage, it's all about making sure everything's on fire and getting those 25, 50, and then 75% extra damage taken to themselves. You want Fire Tsunami, keep it on. Secondly, and I've gone with Rejuvenation. Remember, we're going for a tanky build. We're not trying to clear the fastest, but with a chance of dying. We're trying to make sure that we get through the content. We're trying to make it as easy as possible, and we're trying to make it so that we can be in everyone's face at all times. And this mod is just amazing on any Firestorm build. So what it is, Rejuvenation. Receive 14,158 firepower, which we don't need in the slightest, but it gives us 7,005 anomaly power, which is a really nice boost, and 40,957 armor. And that's for eight seconds whenever your health is replenished, which is constant. This build is all about replenishing your health, all about getting regen. Next up, and we've gone with the armor of the Akari. Now this one comes with Ride the Wave, Heat Wave. The skill can be activated one more time, and just down the bottom, Tidal Wave, Heat Wave. The skill can be activated one more time. That gives us the free heat waves. We're going to need that because we want to be getting the 75% extra damage. 
This isn't the biggest damage in building the game, but it will be able to get in people's face and it will still do a really nice chunk of change to them because you've got that 75% extra damage from your heat waves and because you're going to be putting a little rotation in and just absolutely massacring everything with area effects. So next up, and we've got the waist cloth of the Akari. Now this one is basically to complete the three piece set. If I could switch this out, I very possibly might in the future have a try for the feet because the Anomaly Echo isn't really the best, so I might try a different variation, but it is still really good. Basically, it gives you 11,484 Anomaly Power bonus on skill activation for 15 seconds. So, nice and easy, a little bit of uptime gives you a little bit of extra Anomaly Power. The firepower, not really for us to be perfectly honest. And secondly, we've got Burnt Out, Heat Wave. Damaged enemies takes 25% more damage for 8 seconds. That right there is the one you want on. If you haven't got that in this build, then this build will fall over, the content will take a ridiculous amount of time to do, make sure you put it on, it will absolutely melt enemies. Also it gives us the 3 piece bonus now, every enemy damaged by heatwave grants 50% anomaly power bonus for 10 seconds. Really nice, like I said, biggest anomaly thing in the game, absolutely ridiculous, and it just means that you're going to do a lot of damage because you're capturing everything in those heatwaves. Next up and we've got the gloves, anomaly power, cooldown reduction and status power. That is absolutely perfect, ridiculously good, that's what you're after. What I've put on it, because we're going tanky tanky, damage absorber, increases your armour by 52,659 and resistance by 10%. Now I don't care what anyone tells me, this is hands down one of my favourite mods in the game. It's just guaranteed protection. 10% resistance might not sound like much, it really helps. Obviously, if you want a circle of power or something like that, that would give a lot more resistance. But this gives a bit of mitigation with the armor as well. Hands down, one of my favorite easy to use mods that's just up constantly. And down the bottom, we've got Bullet Kindling. Deals 20% more damage against enemies afflicted by burn. No need to tell you why that's good. We're a pyromancer. They're on fire. 20% more damage. Just down the bottom, Anomaly Power, Skills Life Leech and Healing Received. I would honestly say try your best to get some kind of a cooldown in there. If you couldn't get that, status would be good as well. Don't worry about Healing Received. Now, with this we've got Dying Fire Breath. This, I've said it before, it's a hidden gem. It's really good in some of these builds. Where we're doing Health Regen, this can actually completely keep you alive in the right circumstances. So whenever your health drops below 30%, burn is inflicted on enemies within a 10 meter radius, and that's got a 5 second cooldown. They're on fire for 5 seconds at least, probably a little bit longer. Basically, this is, might as well say, will always make people on fire. You'll get constant regen of your health as long as you're in amongst the ads. If something could one shot you, or if you got sniped in the bum, or something along those lines, or you're out in the open and there's nothing around you, this is not the best mod. If you're in amongst the thicker things like you are with this build, this mod is second to none and will just give you a lot of extra durability, survivability and a little bit of extra damage from the flames. So whenever they hit you, whenever they knock you for six and you're just about to die, you're going to set them alight, you're going to health regen, you're going to be good to go again. Also, this one is down to preference. If you didn't like it, if you were dying in certain ways, so if you felt you needed more armor, chuck in something that gives you more armor, a little bit more mitigation that way. If you feel like you're dying to, say for example, skill damage, chuck in a circle of power. That will give you a lot more mitigation that way. This one is the mod that you can change up for your own playstyle so that you can adapt it and make it so that you'll survive down to a little bit of how you play. And finally, just down the bottom here, and one you definitely cannot take off, just hands down one of the best mods on basically any Pyromancer build, but especially Akari builds, is Untamed Power. Using skills deals 41,761 damage to enemies within a 5 meter radius around you. The damage is equal to 30% of your anomaly power. I've said it before, this scales way, way too good on the Pyromancer and is one of the best, if not the best mod for him, hands down, when he's using the Nakari set, because it just goes up so high. 
basically if your anomaly power scales upward say 500 600 700 thousand this will scale with it i've seen it hit over 230 thousand you could probably get it higher than that in the right builds especially if you've got a technomancer running that bottom tree that gives 30 percent extra anomaly power to everyone it's just hands down a ridiculously good mod chuck it on your build get in there put some malaise in your rotation because it works as a skill as well that will give you that effect hit your heat waves be in everyone's face and you will just survive pretty much every encounter whilst nuking them because of the way that you've got your mod set up right so next up and we've got the skills and you're probably looking at this and thinking that is a very strange assortment of skills and it you'd pretty much be right it is a bit odd but it works really well trust me don't change off of this it works amazingly good so what you're going to do is you're going to heat wave everything while you're heat waving them don't forget you're getting that untamed power procking as well meaning that they're taking an absolute abundance of damage if you can try and hit free heat waves on the really big elites or the bosses that way they're going to take even more damage also try to capture as many enemies so set one group on fire then turn around set another group on fire or just do the same group a couple of times but basically make sure you're making everything on fire because that's how you'll get your health regen as well really nice really easy it's going to keep you alive as long as things are on fire you are not going to fall over if nothing is on fire and you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're getting shot at probably not going to work in your favor next up feed the flames this is not there for our health believe it or not you can in a pinch use it for that but the whole reason you're using this is because on our next bit with our skill tree this will give us an abundance of extra anomaly power so what you're going to do is start off with feed the flames before you do anything else hit feed the flames it's going to boost your damage it's going to boost your anomaly power it's really nice and really easy then go into your heat waves giving yourself all that extra 75 percent damage on everything and finally what you're going to do is either aim off in a distance and destroy everything or just everything that's in front of you and use your phaser beam this will absolutely melt things and does a really big chunk of change considering we haven't really gone full full anomaly i think this is hands down a really good move that i hadn't really been using because of the standing still i didn't like it i fell over a lot you're, you're tanky enough to make it work one thing to remember with this as it says in the description it benefits from your status power so the more status you've got the better it does a big chunk of change 100 000 damage but also it's an interrupt and even more than that as well as enemies within a small radius around you so like i said you're a face tank use this even if they're to your side even if they're slightly behind you even if they're a tiny little ways off and you've missed them this will still nuke them and it means you can be right up close and personal watch this build is all about right so for the skill tree here we have health we want health we love health we love surviving next up we've got some cooldown that's the cooldown on the heat waves you want to be able to apply them as much as possible just over here more health and just down here more cooldown on everything next up we want to be tanky tanky so we're making sure we've got this and it's going to give us an extra 20 percent on our armor just down here more health up here and we've got incinerate the moment burn ends on an enemy inflicts ash status that's not going to be happening that often to be honest but sometimes it can actually help you a little bit if you've applied those heat waves and then you've moved on to something else and they just don't die or you've just missed off the last little bit of health then they're going to pause you can turn around and nuke them with whatever you want or just punch them in the head next up and we've got this increase your weapon damage by 10 percent against marked enemies this is useless we're just using it to get up to the top activating your immobilized skills increases your anomaly power by 45 percent for 10 seconds that's where your feed the flames comes in you're going to activate that as much as you can before you're going into your heat waves before you're using your big moves like your phaser beam just down here and always always whenever you can try to pick up at least one of these increase your resistance by 20 percent now with the mods we've got on as well we've got 30 percent resist in our build i find that easily enough in health regen builds i don't really die to skill damage i'm gonna say touch wood unless something's changed but even if you are remember you've got that one mod that you could swap out so if you wanted to swap it to circle of power or something else whatever you're struggling with you can swap that out and adapt it to your playstyle a little bit next up and we've got more health 
just up here and we've got increase your anomaly power by 2.5% for each unlocked magma golem node. It basically means we're going to be getting 12.5% extra power. Really nice, really good to have. I've got to admit I haven't tested it out quite yet. This one may, I think, probably work a bit better, especially in multiplayer. So increase your damage by 20% against enemies below 30% of health. Maybe something you want to test out, see if it helps you nuke the bosses. I've not had any troubles the way this is, so I'm keeping it as it is for the moment. Just over here, we've got burn afflicted on enemies last 20% longer. Really nice. Like I said, the whole build revolves around basically things being on fire. If you can get a little bit of extended, that's probably a good thing to have. And it just means that you're going to be getting that health regen for a slightly longer duration. Just over here, and we've got more health. Finally, we're going on to this. Increase your skill leech really nice we've got loads of skill leech on our armor set already this just adds to it and makes it really really nice and a great great regen build just up here activate and ignite skills increases your armor by 45 percent for 10 seconds i'll show you in a second why that's so good i think pretty much for all survivability builds you're gonna want to take this just down here we've got fuel for the embers double skill leech when under 30 percent of max health it basically means that you're going to have a little bit more regen, a little bit ways to kind of survive, and it works hand in hand with that dying fire breath I find. Really nice, really easy, and actually comes into play a lot more than you'd think. Just up here, you're going to want this. Enemies afflicted by burn receive 15% more damage. Straight up damage, always good. Just over here, reduces ignite skills cooldown by 15%, meaning you can do more heat waves, spam them, going to have them back quicker, you want this as well. And last but definitely not least, activate and ignite skills increases your armor piercing by 45% and resistance piercing by 45% for 10 seconds. This is the reason why things fall over when you're hitting them with your skills and it's the main reason that you can actually take this tree in the first place. Really nice, really good and helps you absolutely ridiculously with your heat waves and taking down those bigger enemies. Right, well you guys and girls, I'm sure I've taken enough of your time up, but hopefully you'll see from that just how survivable, how tanky, and how good this build really is. If you're struggling to survive those encounters, if you keep thinking, why, why do I fall over? This is definitely the build to try for you, and you'll have a lot of fun playing it. So, hopefully you'll give it a little whirl and let me know what you think. Like I said, you can adapt it a little bit as well. You've got that dying fire breath. If that's not your playstyle, if you find yourself struggling in any way, say for example, like I said, with resistance, chuck on the resistance mod. If you want more damage, chuck a bit more damage in. If you're struggling with elites, chuck on the 25% extra damage to elites. Adapt it to your own playstyle. Main thing is, make sure that you proc the feed the flames. That is going to give you an absolute abundance of extra power. Well, anomaly power, when I can speak properly. Next up, make sure you're using your heat waves. And because you've used them, like I said, I was going to show you earlier, your armor is now up to 184,000. So you've got 7 dent physical reduction. Absolutely beasty. And that's before you've got the rejuvenation kicking in. That will make it about 85, if I remember correctly. You might be able to get a little bit higher. But either way, you're going to be surviving all physical damage from that, especially with the health regen. Next up, get amongst some ads, hit a big boss, whatever you want to do. Make sure you're all buffed up and pop a phaser beam. Really nice, really fun, and I think well worth a playthrough. Right, guys and girls, as always, I hope that's helped. Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox. Take care. I'll see you on the next day.